What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Friday Mortgage Coach Mastermind number 276, where every Friday we come together to mastermind, educate, talk, and hopefully do a lot of good in our mortgage community. Um, I'm Todd Bookspan, the founder of Win by Noon. So on behalf of Dave and the whole crew at Mortgage Coach, welcome to this call. And of course, welcome to none other than my co-host from Plug and Play SM, Deborah Bird. What's up, Deborah? Good morning. It's Friday. Hopefully people have closings today. They're helping their agents get ready for open houses this weekend. You're having 90 degree weather, Vermont, but you are. You know, Arizona is just already on fire. It's, uh, you know, <laughs> 70s. I used to appreciate the 80s, but as I'm getting older, I appreciate the 70s and, and for temperature a little, a little more. Hence the reason we'll be spending a couple months this summer over on the coast by the beach. That'll be kind of fun. And, uh, but, you know, Texas, come on, you guys get hot too. It's 66. I just checked. It's 66 degrees today and we're actually supposed to get to 75. So maybe you just need to buy some property in Texas, Todd. You know, I would love to. If you have any good investments, you just let me know. I don't know any good uh, real estate agents there who specialize in investment rental property, but I would, I would love it. Okay. So speaking of investments, um, our goal today is to talk about, you guys probably saw the big news primarily because Dave keeps talking about it in the mortgage coach community. Um, and the news was this, so let me share it real quick. And this is kind of what we're going to set this up as because this is um, about you guys, right? So um, I'm going to share my screen. So um, Florida just became the largest state to mandate personal finance education in high school. And so, you know, we've been talking about forever in this community, but a lot this year about being captain of the wealth team. We're talking about um, financial literacy and education. And we've got some folks like Walt Schultz and others in this community been doing a great job of getting out there and teaching it. And we just want to shine a light on it. Now it's, you know, it's one thing if it just makes local news, but in this case, it's made every big national news and maybe not yours. And so this is just a great opportunity for you um, to talk about it. So we're going to spend a little bit of time today sort of talking about how you can use this from a social media perspective and really how you can use this to be the captain of the wealth team, how you can use this to um, engage, encourage, and get more people um, on board in your world um, with this news by being the leader, the, the captain. What else should we say about that, Deborah? Well, when I first saw this, I immediately thought, of course, going one to many. One, I'm, I'm grateful that the governor of Florida is, you know, he just signed this bill. But I also sat back and I thought, why couldn't you do this and be the guide in your community right now? I mean, there's I have a big real estate team um, he was with EXP. He's got a lot of people in his downline and he, he moved to Puerto Rico. I, I don't know if that was maybe for tax purposes or what, but I was talking to his wife, some good friends with his wife, and they were like, you know, we can do e-learning anywhere. They're still getting America's educational system by doing it all online because of this evolution of technology that I thought, okay, how do we really equip the mortgage coach community and these loan officers who really believe in the same crusade of helping the way Americans get into debt and how they can leverage their money in a way that isn't taught in schools, just because Florida is doing it right now. Why, what is stopping you who's on this call and even drop in the comments, any questions that you have. Um, I used to be a teacher at the middle school level and I, I went up the chain, was an instructional coach for many years and then was a curriculum writer for all of middle school science. And so if you have questions of how to get into schools or what that would even look like, just drop them in the comments below and I'll help answer those if I can. But because of technology and being able to go one to many, I really challenge those listening to lead the pack, like lead your following, maybe leverage this article and start reaching out to local superintendents and principals and just asking them how do they feel about it? And even if it's not mandatory in the curriculum right now, that doesn't mean you can't put your foot in the door and say, hey, I'd really like for this school to be the pilot school where maybe we host a class in the evening every Wednesday or one Wednesday a month from 6 to 7.30, kind of like what Mike Garrett, I think there was an interview that we did, gosh, I think it was in January with Mike Garrett, where he was doing a class with the high school kids and they did it in the evening, it was after hours. Um, you could do that too. You don't have to wait until your state passes a bill. I would, I would leverage this news and make it your intro to some larger conversations so you can one, get exposure 
as a brand in the community and spread the financial literacy that's needed, not only from the students, but even the teachers. That, that was my other thought, Todd, is who's going to be teaching these classes and what are the qualifications? What will that curriculum look like? Maybe there's a way a local mortgage coach could help. You know, I would think so. You know, that I think that's probably the biggest risk, right? I hate to say it because I don't want to insult you as an educator. I've got um, a daughter who's a teacher. I've got another who's in school to be a teacher. I've got a mother, my mother-in-law, all teachers. So I love, love, love teachers. But, you know, certainly we know that the states don't always have the best direction. So there's no doubt if um, anyone in our community can help influence that, that that would be um, huge. You know, that's, you know, that's for sure. Um, I threw a link to the article in Facebook. One of the other cool things about it is you can actually look and see what your state has oh. um, going on. So um, let me see if I can actually find it. Where the heck is well, it? As, as you're finding that, I don't know if anyone heard the, if you just Google it on YouTube, the governor, his, he had a lot of different schools and charter schools and um, organizations that were really kind of uh, the pioneers of getting this approved. So I, I would even... I was half tempted to pick up the phone and call those people and just start learning because I, of course, I had a conversation with Dave yesterday and we were going to really brainstorm and get together on how we can create content that would be shareable and educational for the loan officers on this call that if you're following the Modern Mortgage Summit, um, also, you know, when by noon, those posts are going to be designed for you to go back, look at those pages, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook and use those as your vessels of content to help either you create it or just screenshot and share it. Um, but that's, I've all, I brought all these books. I'm actually at the Nerd Squad headquarters today. So my, my view is a little bit different. I brought some books of how do we break down and kind of go back to old school of curriculum writing and making it where we're educating those who are in this community so that you guys can also take action and educate those in your own community, in your own groups that you're running. Well, I love that, right? We use in, you know, plug and play SM, Deborah's company for both Win by Noon and for the Modern Mortgage Summit. And I feel like not enough of you take advantage of that content and share it because of the fact that it's the easy button, right? The, the whole goal in life is, uh, I think, to swipe and adapt and make life easier. I should say the whole goal, a goal in life can be that. And, uh, and so it's, it's all there. It's, it's there for um, you to use. Ironically, I see more real estate agents share it than I see a uh, loan officer share, but I think that's a, I think it's a great opportunity for, for all of you. And I really like that idea, you know, Deborah, of the whole idea of curriculum building that like that's beyond my, my brain scope, but, but I trust that you can do it. Here's the, in that CNBC article. So there's, you know, every, whoever your favorite news source is, look at there, but there's a link to this Google doc, which I don't know who the NGPF are. I probably should have looked that up before I looked at it, but um, there's 56 bills in 26 states um, that are rolling. So here in Arizona, um, they are getting ready. If they ever do something, they looked at it, it looks like last month, but they're going to develop and adopt an academic comp competency requirement for an alternative mathematics graduation pathway that includes algebra, geometry, and other advanced mathematics course, which may include personal finance, computer science, statistics, or business mathematics. So again, it, the personal finance is just one little blip in there, but imagine that if, if we can influence that. So it makes me think I've got a um, client of mine and a, who's a friend where our kids went to school together, who is a state senator of some sort. Um, I don't know what his role is. I should probably know that. I'll just keep my mouth shut because I don't really know what his role is, but he used to be the vice mayor. I don't know. But either way, he's an important person in politics here in Arizona. So I'm going to ask him about it um, because ultimately now that I reread it, I'm realizing it's not as impressive as I thought it was um, because I don't know that. Um, although my daughter did tell me statistics are important just for the record because she's a school teacher. Um, but she did agree with me that we might not need calculus or some of those other things, uh, algebra too. And so I think the, you know, kind of the moral of the story is, is, is what can, what, what are the ideas that you have, right? So there's a bunch of you watching it um, on Facebook, you know, any questions or any thoughts, let's make this mastermind style because it'd be really helpful to help the community. So my action plan for all of you would be one, um, watch the video that Dave recorded with Dan Keller yesterday, because um, they laid out in about 10 minutes, what you know, kind of what Dan is going to use to hide to news jacket. He literally said he posted the article that got um, in his Facebook and his Facebook stories, it got shared like almost 40 times at the time that they had done the recording. So again, obviously Dan attracts people who are financially literate and they did what I'm telling you to do with um, the social media stuff that Deb's team prepares for us is 
they went out and shared it. They shared what Dan said about it and put their own comments on it. And so number one is figure out what, what news source it is that you want to look at and then just figure out who, who you can use it with a, as, as a call to action, right? I mean, it's a great conversation piece with all of your real estate partners. Um, I find that, you know, we all have call reluctance and, and when, when you have something easy to talk about, they, they will be interested in this. I was going to say they should be interested in it, but they will be interested in it. And so, you know, I do think that there is a great, uh, you know, a great benefit for all of you to A, be knowledgeable on it, um, B, be passionate about it, and then three, start talking about it. Yeah, and I was even thinking for those loan officers who are licensed in Florida, and even if you live in Florida and you're licensed in Florida, what a, it's just a great opportunity to send that article and say to your local school district or schools in your area that the high school level and just ask how could you help be a part of this you know process maybe there's something that you could do because again and not anything against teachers but i remember um one of my students who was in college and he was enrolled to be an entrepreneur and i thought you're taking college classes to be an entrepreneur like is the professor and i know you Hey, hey, I went through the entrepreneurship program at U of A. Don't be bagging on people who go to like, college for entrepreneurship. But wait a minute. You're going to spend, like, let's just look at this from a logical business standpoint. You're going to spend all this money to get the degree, to learn to be an entrepreneur, so that when you graduate, you have all this debt from a perfect, that, you know, and I don't know, because I, I obviously, you, you would have more experience to this, but what are they going to be teaching? And is it going to be relevant? Is there anything, anything about cryptocurrency? And I had actually texted Dan this morning saying, if you were going to write the perfect curriculum in sequence, and I know Dave asked him this a little bit in that call, what is that from a high school level? How would you layer in the content where it's building, much like, you know, you have algebra and algebra two, that's real. And it's not guided from what maybe the government is trying to train kids to do and to get a job and to go to college and get a bunch of debt you know I'm not against college you, you definitely I mean I have two college degrees so I I paid my dues but I just wonder what that looks like and how if you were brave enough those who are listening to make those contacts and say you want to be a part of the solution because in your brand, and some of you I've had on Discovery Calls and you guys tell me this is your brand's character. What a great and easy opportunity to now prove it. And to take this post, even if you just shared the same, you could share the article or just take a picture. Um, and those of you who use TikTok, there's a way you can make this your background. Okay, you can do that via Zoom too. And say, look, this is what Florida is doing and this is exactly what we do, like make it where it is. It's a great opportunity to just talk about it and differentiate yourself other than interest rates are rising and, you know, inflation is up. But this is the core of what you're trying to do and why you invest in things like mortgage coach and go beyond just the transaction and do your annual asset reviews. It's because you truly believe that you are the captain of the wealth team, but you've got to prove it because your words no longer hold weight, as much weight as what your actions do. So what are you willing to do to prove it right now? So I love it. Just, I got distracted because I had this little notification come up on Facebook because I've got Facebook up below this. I'm watching to see if any of you would give us some comments, at least give us a like, okay, who are watching in Facebook. And um, and it posted, it said, when by new just posted a video. So I was like all excited. That's that's you guys, Deborah, making me look good. I mean, I'm, I'm creating social media and I'm not even here. I'm not even... Uh, not even having to do it myself, but you should be getting on TikTok. That's what Deborah want, wanted to tell me. She told me to have it installed on my phone today, um, which I've had it on my phone for a really long time. And Gary V talked about it back in the Musical.ly days. But um, but so, you know, wow, I think there's a couple of things. I have, I mean, my because I got kids, right? They were all, they, they were listening to it back then. I mean, my kids keep me young. You keep forgetting that, right? This gray hair, just I brush this in for good, you know, just to try to make people think I'm older than I am. You're going to be like your dad, that old, hip, cool guy. Exactly. Exactly. I think that's, uh, you know, I think that's the key, but, you know, I mean, I think it comes back to, um, you know, again, I take baby steps, right? Don't, you don't need to pick up the phone and call your schools. You don't need to pick up the phone and call your local politicians, right? That's for you advanced ninjas, right? I think that the baby step is, is to figure out what, how am I going to posture this? So I like that. What'd you call it? Your brand identity. What'd you say when you say do brand it? character? brand character, right? So I, I would think that all of you who are a part of the mortgage coach community um, 
your brand character includes financial literacy, right? I mean, raise your hand, right? There's not, there's probably not one of you who that's not the case. And so if that's not the case, then you should be figuring out how to do this. So let's go back, Deborah. So you were talking about how would you layer this? So I'd love to hear from, from those of you who are, who are watching this live, or even if you're watching this on YouTube, you know, I would love to hear from it. You know, it seems to me, you know, you just sort of have to start off with the basics, right? I mean, I think that is it, would it be just income, savings and debt? Where is that where you would probably start, Professor? Yeah, I mean, ironically, it's going to be no different, I would think, with how you approach your clients. I mean, even starting as basic as what is credit? How do you establish credit? How important is credit when you are borrowing the difference of interest rate and how your money can work for you, not only when you're borrowing money, but also when you're investing and really understanding those differences of saving, investing, your income, different types of income, having multiple streams of income, but then how do you manage that flow? Even just learning what cash flow is, compound interest is huge because goodness, if we could have more people investing and understanding compound interest, think about, think about that. Like at 18 years old, I mean, that would make a huge difference in America. So the, I, I would start as basic of what is money? What is credit? What is the difference between investing, saving? How do you budget? Um, what, what would be your thoughts, Todd, if you had to think about breaking it down? Like you, you've got kids. What's your youngest? How old is she? 19. Dang, you're yeah, old. They're not young kids, but um, <laughs> you know, it, it kind of, it's kind of funny too, because so, you know, a couple of thoughts that come to mind. You know, one thing I think that, I think would scare people is the crypto piece, right? So I've been mm -hmm. in the crypto space since 2016. And I think if you are, if you, you mentioned crypto when you're talking to somebody in a high school who's not, you know, who still views it as some type of voodoo, I think that would be, I would probably leave that out of the equation for now. I would put that sort of in the, you know, if you've got a, a school that's kind of advanced, then great. You can you kind of bring in a basic 101 you know, lesson in that. I, I do think that one of the challenges right now there is um, the, the version of that where, you know, people just don't understand it, right? So you're scaring people because they don't understand something, they don't think it's real. And then there's also the get rich quick. I saw a commercial um, yesterday when I was watching my Wildcats lose. Um, and it was like, I'm a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire from some guy who was in his, you know, his, his crypto account going up and going down. And and so I think that that's the view that people have is, is that they just, you know, kind of view it like the whole GameStop, you know, stock craze on Robin Hood. And so I think you, you have to go with the tried and true stuff. And, you know, for my kids, you know, it's funny, my daughter joked because she said, um, you know, she's home. My middle daughter is a school teacher. She's home and she's like, yeah, if we're going to run further, I need to be listening to something or you can, you know, dad, you can tell me about investing and in having the buying stocks and, and about my IRA again, like you used to tell me when we would run in eighth grade. So, you know, I've been talking to my kids about this for a long time, but oftentimes, as you might guess, your kids don't want to hear it from mom and dad. Um, they want to hear from, from somebody else. So uh, my daughter found somebody on TikTok and her, the website's called your first hundred K, I think is what it's called. And um, and so I said, oh, well, so my daughter's like, hey, I joined this Facebook group. She's all done all the free stuff. And she's like, well, I don't want to. I said, well, what are you learning? She told me she needed the side gig because she's a teacher. And I said, well, what are you what are you learning? And she says, oh, all the things that you taught me, dad. But again, she's hearing it from a different perspective. So so for Christmas, I gave um, her and my older daughter each. Uh, I bought the hundred dollar your first hundred K coursework. And uh, so it's going to be part of our summer project because guess what? I gave them a class and they haven't watched it yet. Can you believe that? Um, probably because they didn't buy it themselves. Um, but nonetheless, uh, actually I lied. My, my older daughter has watched the first one, which is on budgeting, right? And so I think it's a matter of looking and see what's out there that, that you get excited about and then how could you turn around um, and teach, you know, teach that same thing. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. The other thing I thought of is the gap It'll be interesting to watch. You're going to have kids learning about topics that even their parents don't know much about right now. It's kind of like when they change the math, what do they call it? The common core math now where my kids would come home with their homework. And I'm like, I don't even know how to help you with showing your work on this because it's so different than how we did math. Um, but so what are those either lessons that are going to have to kind of be retaught to the adults and also the paradigm shifts that maybe some of the parents who were conditioned to believe a certain way about money. It, it, could there be, you know, some friction? Which is why I believe so heavily in 
if you're truly the guide in your community, are you doing the classes? Are you welcoming people in the community to help everybody get out on that bus who all may come from a different level of background? I would say it's, it's the, your environment, your experiences and your education all shape your lens. Those three E's is how we, we filter things. And so how are we going to help even with some of that bridging of the gap for the adults that are gonna get left behind because maybe they, you know, they're not going through the school system now today. And it could also be cool to see what leaders come from these high school kids who are really good on TikTok. And, you know, some of these YouTube stars that are making millions at 13 years old, finding their own way of creating sources of income, not because they're trying, they're just living their passion and teaching. It's gonna be pretty cool. I can't wait to see how it, it transforms. Well, you know, it's funny that you say that, that, you know, that these kids can actually surpass their parents' knowledge. So keep that in mind too, is, you know, if you're thinking about how to educate the, the children, there, there's got to be probably a parent component because that's, you know, not that every parent knows calculus. Like my kid brought it to me, granted, I took calculus for some crazy reason. Um, and I think calculus too, as an elective in college, that was really worthwhile. So that one you could take on, Deborah. Um, but, you know, ultimately it is a, you know, I mean, there's that gap, you know, that it's, it's a, a gap for the kids. And then that's how we grow up financially literate kids, but it's also their parents who have a gap. So it's kind of figuring out what's that sidecar coursework that we can, that we can help the, the parents with. Um, one Robert put a link in both Zoom and, and down in Facebook that um, there's 49.4 million students attending public schools. Um, and yeah, it poses the question, right? How many of you um, think have parents that own homes? I mean, that's, that's a pretty interesting, you know, question. And I think there's just a lot a lot going on, you know, in the world. And I think we'll, um, you know, maybe talking a bit about what's going on in the market and sort of how to be educating your clients and realtors with regards to real estate prices. Cause there was a good question that one of uh, Cindy Erdman's clients asked in the Facebook group um, this morning about it, which had, a, had a, some good comments on it. Um, we got a, a comment too from Jeremy Baxter. What about starting with history of the Fed, central banking system, um, when we can, come off the gold or when came off the gold back dollar fiat system to teach how money works and understand the history of how we got here. Um, would that be too much to start with? Um, and he's jazzed about this movement. You know, I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is that, you think that's too much to start with Deborah? Or you think that that's, that's kind of history. So it brings in the school part of it. Yeah, no, I think that's good. I mean, it, it really depends. Is this going to be a course that's like one year or is this something like math where it builds on itself and you have algebra one, algebra two, I haven't seen all the, information they may not have posted it yet of how they're going to approach this this course or it could just be half a year you know maybe it's My, i think it's a half a year thing i think they're throwing it in there and, and it's you know it is kind of funny i would tell you i got a uh, a buddy of mine who graduated number one in uh, engineering at university of arizona and they actually have a required course for seniors when who are going out and getting high paying engineering jobs on basic finance um, so it just reminds me, I should ask him what that course was about. All he remembered when I talked to him about it back in the day was that it, he learned how to balance a checkbook. Um, lucky for him, he's got a, a wife who's a great real estate agent and uh, very frugal. They're very frugal people. We went to Disneyland, they packed peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You know, I bought my kids the unhealthy hot dogs. And, uh, but nonetheless, um, you know, they're very well off. And I, I'll just give a little, little bit of a nod to the class he took maybe at UVA that, uh, that helped get him there. Now, the real question is, was that crunchy peanut butter or creamy peanut butter? You know, I didn't ask. I didn't ask, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I drove to California and I stayed at the hotel. Um, they left at 2 a.m. and drove from Arizona, so they'd have one last night at the hotel. Oh. But you know what? They're very well off. Uh, they're pretty much about to retire, so good for them. And, uh, you know, there's everyone's got their different way, you know, different ways to get there. And I think that that's, you know, kind of one of the other interesting pieces about it, right? Who are your you know, who are your go-to people um, and who do you listen to? And I would say, I'd have to look it up on Audible, um, but I've heard people in this community talk about it. And I've actually watched some of these other, or listened to some of these other books that, um, you know, recently that people had uh, mentioned. If, I don't know if I can find them that quick because my kids have all sorts of crazy books in my Audible account that I don't even know what they are. Um, You're also really pushing that phone pretty far away. Um, but I don't, because I don't have my glass on. Thanks for telling everyone that, <laughs> pointing that out. Um, but there's a couple of them that are, you know, I, again, I just listened to some that I got from this community. There were, there were recommendations from all of you. And I spent a Saturday while I was, you know, doing something, cleaning the garage or something. And I, 
I went through and I listened to two different books from two different people with two different philosophies on how they, you know, they coach people, mentor people with, you know, with regards to money. And so I do think you also have to just take the time to learn. For me, um, I did that because we, we were starting this year really talking about financial literacy. And I thought, well, if I can listen to these folks more, one's by Raymond Seafit. I know that. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. Um, but he started as a young guy. And, um, and so, you know, there's just, his book is I Can Teach You to Be Rich. Was, uh, I do know that one. What is it? I Can Teach What? I Can Teach You to Be Rich. Mm. He's got a well, podcast. If you remember, which I'm trying to look it up now, the, that huge stack of books that even Wally had just mentioned. I can't remember the guy's first name, but the last name of the author was Murray. And it was, he had Simple Wealth. You remember what those books were? The Game of Numbers, Behavioral Investment, Consulting. I mean, I know that's more financial advisor type topics, but I had written those down thinking they may be good. I mean, this was his, I took a screenshot. It was a lot of books. Um, yeah. The yeah. Million Dollar Financial Service Practice. I mean, Again, these are more financial advisor related, but it'd be interesting to see what are what where would be the first place to start or where do they even start? Now usually you have to have money before they're seeking an advisor. But if you are sitting down with the client today, Todd, or even your team, I mean they y'all are a top producing team. Where do y'all find is the biggest gap for most people when you're having this conversation? With that, I think I think all of you in the in the loan space, you know, see that with your clients, right? I mean, what percent of your clients? You've got the the small percent at the top, you know, ten to twenty percent that are, and it's part of it could be just be where your referrals come from. You know, obviously, if they're coming from a financial advisor, you've got a bigger stack that are in that space. But you know, I just find that there's just when it, you know, let's talk first time home buyers for a minute. I mean, most of them don't say I've got an eight hundred credit score and no debt. Most of them have student loans, car loans, credit card debt, and so just from a from that perspective right there, if you could help people. And, and you know, we all pick on Dave Ramsey um, because he does 15 year mortgages, but he does teach the snowball of debt. I mean, he does help people, you know, get out of debt. And that's not who necessarily our target client would be if you had an ideal client, but those are people who are buying homes and they're, you know, they're doing that. But the reason that they are going that route is because nobody else is teaching them that there's a different way. And so that's really where the opportunity comes in to pull in a TCA and show them, okay, here's, you know, here's your 15 year fixed option. Here's a 30 year option and, and invest the difference. And then, you know, in 13 and a half years at 6% return, you're going to have enough money to pay off your mortgage to show them that there's a different way to get there. Um, and then you also have to be, I don't want to say harsh, but transparent with someone to say, but if you're just, if you got poor fiscal habits and you can't save the money, you're not going to give to financial advisor. You know, there are people who are better off having a 15 year loan and locking up their home equity so they don't have access to it, right? That's going to be their road to wealth if they don't have the discipline, you know, that's required, you know, to get there. So, um, oh, look at that, Amy Simmons, how the heck are you? She says she thinks people want to um, know how to handle their money in the way that it affects them most right now. No, I, I totally agree. For sure, for sure. Um, and then I do think we got, uh, of course, Scott Nicholson there talking about um, Lender Launchpad. And, um, you know, there's no doubt there. I mean, I, it was, it was great because what Scott did was he put it into his own news and his lender in his, that news hacking bit into his lender launchpad account and made it look even cooler because he's self-branded it. So when people share it, it's got his personal Nicholson loans branding on it. So that's uh, certainly something to, um, to check out, you know, no doubt. Well, as, I don't know if you've heard Todd lender launchpad partnered with the borrower smart university with the other Todd. And they are working on incorporating some of that financial literacy and curriculum built into Lender Launchpad. So that's something that it, for the current users, um, you know, they, they've probably already heard about it because I, I attended his webinar this week and, and saw it. But it's pretty incredible the resources that are going to be created just within that tool that then you can make your own and share it in an easy way which, with just a link or once you do share your lender launchpad link that couples your, whether it's a pre-approval letter or your TCA with your YouTube video explaining a certain strategy, they could keep, you know, filtering on your website because lender launchpad pretty much creates a website for you that you can own the domain. People can apply, call you from there, but it's, it's like a hub of all your YouTube videos, all your TCAs, and then other resources where, you know, now with this curriculum being built in, I mean, it's, it was pretty incredible to see this week just what Todd and Scott are working on for those who have invested 
inland or launch pad. So I think it's, I can't believe he hasn't increased his prices yet. <laughs> Honestly, I'm like, this I, is pretty incredible. I love it. I love it. Well, that's, no, that's perfect. I, I think that's a, uh, that's a great piece. So facts for, since we're pitching for one sec, let me just um, remind you all, we mentioned modern mortgage summit and modern real estate summit. They're May 25th and they're combined together. Um, so if you just go to modern mortgage summit.com tickets, a hundred bucks. So we kept the price the same, but you actually get two events. And so in the morning, it'll be modern mortgage summit. I've been seeing all the speakers. It's, you know, people that, you know, and recognize um, in this community, Shayla Gifford, um, Denise Donahue, Josh metal, Wally, um, Illy Bieri. Um, we've got the, the greats of our business who are going to get on there. And you probably do or don't know this. We don't tell them what to talk about. They're going to pick a topic that's relevant to them. And if you've never attended a modern mortgage summit before, it's going to have um, four or five, 12 to 18 minute keynotes, but most of it's micro content, four to six minute videos that are just quick hits that you can easily digest. And then by switching gears in the afternoon to the modern real estate summit, you will have the opportunity, one, to host your realtors in your office, right? So what Dan Keller last year hosted in, the, in a movie theater, which, you know, of course, my head, 40 feet tall, a little scary idea for me to think about. However, it's, it's a great opportunity. So he had real estate agents show up in there, but you can bring them in your office, just put it on your big screen TV. And then we're also, um, once again, doing 25 and 100 packs of tickets um, that we had, you know, hundreds of loan officers purchase and then use that to share with their referral partners. Um, and our commitment is, I have no doubt that we're going to have something in the modern real estate summit that'll talk and address the financial literacy piece um, so that it brings those partners back to you mortgage coaches so that you have that tie in to help educate them. And so we announced it earlier this year than we ever have. We put it in May because we did a survey and 67% of you said it should be an end of May, early June, um, because it gives you the opportunity to get going with your real estate agent. So I would encourage you to think about it now. Now's the time to be engaging with your agents um, and get that role. And then the other thing that I'll just throw out there real quick is that um, by popular demand, I wasn't going to do it. I was just going to do it once this year. I'm actually doing a second group of my uh, Win by Noon Operating System 2.0 um, group training and coaching program. So if you just go to WBN for Win by Noon Operating System, because you got to install a new operating system. Um, it's a great program. It's primarily designed for loan officers who are struggling to do more than five loans a month. So I've got uh, mainly in the current group, 40% uh, brand new loan officers and the pricing is tiered. So you brand new people can afford it. You people who are struggling to do less than or more than five loans a month um, can do it. But I actually have almost 30% of the people are doing over five loans a month. I got a hundred million dollar producer in there. I've got a couple of them, you know, people doing 100, 200 loans a year, but it's really geared towards newer folks. And it's a 12 week course, really of me walking through uh, my scripting and my processes from, you know, really just how to uh, build out your day, how to um, build out a lead follow-up system, an in-process system, a pre-qualification system, a client for life system. And then of course, going after um, real estate agents. So um, anyone who feels like they're in a, the mode and want to learn. Um, in fact, I even had someone who went through it three years ago and he said he signed up for it and he said, hey, is it going to be the same content? I'm like, well, probably 80% of what you did, but with uh, today's modern twist. And I said, hey, you can bail out if you want. He's like, oh, no, heck no, I'm all in. So I'm super excited about uh, getting that launch. It's launching in two weeks-ish, one and a half weeks, something like that. So um, go there, check six, it out. Right? Sign up now. April 6th. Yeah, it's going to be on a Wednesday for the first one. And after that, it's on subsequent Tuesdays. Um, but the other group finishes on Tuesday, April 5th, um, and we're jumping in there. So I'm uh, I'm always excited about that. It's something I'm super passionate about. And my wife thinks I'm crazy because she's like, all right, you just killed yourself to make sure that you delivered a uh, great for this 12 weeks and you're doing it again. But heck yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to be doing it again. Well, I think it's important for people to know too, if, if they have to miss, like maybe this wasn't on your radar and said so maybe you have something planned on a Tuesday, you report all of them and people can go back and watch the recording, right? Yeah, I would say it's, you know, it's kind of funny because, you know, certainly the first one, 100% of the people are on and then the next one, it's like, you know, 95%. And then now it's about 90% of the people on and then 10% of the people watch the recording. Plus you have access to it. So the gentleman who said, hey, I still see it in my win by noon training vault. Um, is mm -hmm. that the same one? I said, well, yeah, you still have your old course. So here he is, you know, three years later, he still has access to the, to the previous content. But, you know, I think really it's, you know, one thing that's happened obviously over time is you know, you and I are on here with Dave every week, you know, twice a week. And it's, there's just so much more learning now that we get to integrate in as, as we teach, but it's really hard. I think for a loan officer to watch every video, right. You just don't have time for it. And it's really hard for a loan officer, especially if you're struggling to manage your time, if you're struggling to build the business. Um, I've got actually a handful of people in that group who um, I, when they sent me what their weekly schedule was, um, then their ideal week, it said work. I'm like, well, give me some more specificity. What's work? And they're like, no, no, Todd, that's my other job. Like they're working, you know, full-time and 
working in mortgages. And, you know, I got a, a big heart for someone who's trying to launch in this career, especially this year, because this year is going to be a crazy tough year in this business. And so it's, uh, it's my way to hopefully get uh, more of you through 2022 with uh, some momentum uh, and, and have a great year instead of just having an okay year. Okay. And someone asked for the link. It's when by noon operating system.com, right? Um, WBN operating system.com. Yes. So for reason, perfect. Just, let me see. Let me type it in because it wasn't working for me. WBN. And it's got a lot of information in there. It's got a link to the video that I did for the last class on Q&A, which will go, goes kind of deep into what it was. I had, you know, 30, 40 people on a Zoom call where they were just asking me questions of what was going on. So um, I'm just super passionate about it. I always say this right there. We have so many great coaches in this community who for a thousand to three thousand dollar a month can change your life. And, you know, I was super uh, fortunate to have um, a coach for well, I still have a coach now. Jonathan Roach is my coach, but I'm building champions um, coach. Uh, they were my coaches for over 12 years and, you know, just some great mentors um, in that organization. And, um, and this is really, I think, just an opportunity to help you guys grow so that you can afford one of these other amazing coaches in the business. Um, that's not the business I'm in. I love the fact that we have great coaches in our community. Um, I love the fact that um, they support Win by Noon and they support the, the mortgage coach community as well. And so just know that that's, uh, that's where we're going. But if you want to hear a little more about um, what I've done in the past and how I've built my team, this is a great uh, opportunity to get the true uh, insight into what's into what's going on. Um, all right, so enough about me. Let's get back to all of you. Um, and so, uh, so it was an interesting post that this. Well, what else do you want to find? Out? Find this other post that um, that Dave tagged me in this morning, so we can maybe shift gears and talk about that because I think that would be actionable for all of us today. I don't know if you're talking or not because I'm not looking there, but. If you are, I can't hear you. No, I'm, I'm looking for the. Oh, now I can hear you. I was looking. Now at I hear you. Okay, good. All right. So anything else we want to talk about the financial literacy piece before we kind of shift gears here? What, what else are you thinking? So here's what I how I would summarize it. And then you kind of bring up what, what you want to do. Um, number one is we would love to hear from you all, right? What can we as a community do to put together? What do you think are the points? So Jeremy Baxter gave us, hey, let's talk about the history of money. I think that's awesome. So I would love if you're in Zoom or watching this on YouTube or on Facebook chat to say, hey, here's the three things I think are really critical that you put into a curriculum for financial literacy. I think that would be really helpful for the whole community and would love to hear that. Number two is read the article and share the article, right? You got to read it before you share it. Um, share it on and create a social interaction around it and then make this your actionable realtor call, right? In an ideal week, you should be having a day where you're proactively calling your real estate agents. And this is something you should talk to them about. And then when you've got pre-approved clients that you should be calling weekly, you're like, gosh, I don't want to call this person again and him complain about the fact they got outbid by cash again on the house. Great. Now you've got something else to talk about. Hey, you've got kids. What do you think about this? Right. So I think that's a great action plan. And then, you know, lastly, if you want to be a super achiever, do what Deb said earlier, you know, pick up the phone, call the schools, you know, call the politicians, because in the end, that's what's going to make the change. You help in getting involved. You don't need a law to offer to a school to go in and teach. And I know you just taught the other day at school, right, Deb? What did you teach? Mm -hmm. It was. Um... It was a summit for multiple high schools in one auditorium that basically was just financial principles. And as soon as you graduate, whether you go to college or not, what would be, what advice would I give to my younger self if I were sitting in their seat? So it was a high achiever. Um, I'm trying to remember the acronym of the kids, but they were all, they were competing against one another. They were about to go to state. And so I was one of the guest speakers that they had. And, you know, those kids are smart. It's amazing just having conversations with them. And because of the access to YouTube, pretty much anything you want to learn about, they have taken the ownership of learning in their own hands where you could hear almost the frustration of being forced to go down a certain path because that's the way the school curriculum is designed, but it maybe wasn't around their self-interest. So if they wanted to learn how to be an entrepreneur or they wanted to learn more about real estate investing or engineering, it's like they already knew where to go to get certain advice and just took matters in their own hands and would do that at, at night. And then, then they were competing. And so it was, it just really, it was fascinating to, to see the growth of, and just the maturity of the, how YouTube is now encouraging kids to want to learn again, where I felt like when I was back in school, I was not a great reader. <laughs> I was the kid that literally in elementary school, I had a PVC pipe that they made that I had to hold to my ear and to my mouth because I was, they said, 
twins learn slower and you know who knows if that's true or not but I would read out loud Denise and I would read out loud all the time to each other that everything became so auditory that I am a note taker and I have to hear and and when I write it it like crystallizes in my brain it's just how I learn so you guys have seen me when I when I take notes I was a kid that would have to go to college and listen not just you know sit in and, and watch or just read I could not comprehend while just reading so I literally had a PVC pipe I would whisper and it would echo um, but I thought, wow, if I, back then, if I could not be forced to read certain books, that I just, it just wasn't interesting. So I thought I just didn't like to read. That's, that was my conclusion whenever I graduated high school, but it wasn't true. I just wasn't reading things that fascinated me. Like I've always loved psychology and the mind and I taught science. And so I would teach, I've always loved skulls. Um, in fact, I have this really cool, it's not because I'm like this, you know, I was gonna say badass, although I am a badass, but the school you are. protects the, the brain. And I would always tell my kids beyond the brain of protecting, you have to protect your mind and what you feed your mind and what you consume. That's the one muscle that if you had to work out consistently and protect it, your mind, because to me, I believe that then funnels everything else. And so had I just used YouTube and gone down a journey of my own self-exploration of what really interested me earlier on, like that's what I'm seeing kids are doing now. And so they're going to be way far beyond us old dogs uh, once they enter the workforce. So it's, it was it was incredible to watch. It was eye opening just from being out of the classroom since 2012 of how much has changed. And there are some even public schools. It doesn't have to be a charter school. There's there's career schools that if you have enough room in your you know elective space that you could go and take. And again, I always thought who what credentials or what are the qualifications of the people teaching these classes and maybe what help or support do they need? All right, well, now I'm gonna have to talk to my 22 year old because she's an assistant math teacher in Manhattan. And, uh, and so I will, she, she's here till tomorrow. So I'm gonna talk to her, maybe see if she can uh, help me create an elective that, that she'll agree to teach to her kids in high school. She teaches uh, 10th or 11th grade math this year. I think she taught seniors last year. Wow. And uh, she teaches kids with learning differences, right? So kids who have who are struggling to to learn in her school, and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick her brain a little bit more about it because she's the the kid who's kind of driven by the um, very stubborn, very self uh, supportive. Considering she works on a te assistant teacher salary and lives in Manhattan and does not want any money from mom or dad, so uh, wow. I'm my 26 year old. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> we won't go there. Um, and so, so I think it's a, I do think it's a, a fascinating, you know, comment. I love the fact that a, you've been in the school teaching B, you know, recently, right to the overachiever high achiever group, which is awesome. And then that you have that background. And so I just think, you know, our community is, is super lucky. One um, other thing too, we should talk about you and I on the win by noon channel. So you guys can all join. You don't have to be a win by news, noon user, the win by noon, um, user master or the win by noon mastermind group on Facebook. And, um, Deborah and I are doing uh, a weekly call on there that runs, I say it's 30 minutes to an hour. We tend to average about 45 minutes, but on Monday, we're going to relaunch the TCA a day, CMA a day um, for uh, Q2. And so that group is probably two thirds loan officers, one third real estate agents. So it's a great place to bring your real estate agents because they're going to hear conversations that impact um, both you and them. And it kind of reinforces what you're telling them. And, you know, kind of like my kids, they heard it from me, but they heard it from someone else. And all of a sudden it made sense you know, again, bring your realtors in there because they'll hear it from you and they'll be like, oh, that's awesome. But then they hear it from Deborah. They're like, oh yeah, I'm totally in now because Deborah's so smart and everyone thinks that, you know, what she says is more articulate than what the rest of us say, which is probably true. Well, you know, what I like about that too is I think it was, was Jeremy Forcier who said, um, you know, sometimes it can be an awkward position when it feels like you're coaching your real estate agents. And so you don't want to come across as the coach to me, what a great opportunity to invite them to be on this call on Mondays where it's not you coaching them. You're just a part of a, basically an accountability group and, you know, people who care enough about your success, especially as we end Q1 to really kick ass in Q2 of getting back to those daily reps and things that you need to be doing. And it's not because you, the loan officer are trying to preach to your agents. It's you guys in it together. And to me, that togetherness creates a certain bond that you know, once you go through it together, it's, you become, you know, a lender for life because you just provided value and opened their eyes to something that no other lender, I guarantee you, is probably inviting them to. So take action on that. Monday at what time? Is it Pacific time? Uh, it's 1 p.m. Pacific time. Okay. 1 p.m. Pacific time. 
Um, hey. So, you know, because I live in Arizona and we don't have daylight savings time here. So it just threw me off to have it be at noon. Just didn't, uh, didn't work with one of my other, my other commitments that I've got here. So, um, so those of you that I switched your time, yes, we switched your time. <laughs> Um, here's that other article that um, that Dave tagged us in earlier, which okay. I thought was um, an interesting one. So um, this was from Matt Matthew Posey. Hey, MC community, my coach, Cindy Ehrman, who we all love, suggests that I post a quick question here. I have no less than six calls this week from panicked agents about prospects either, either staying on the fence, pulling out of contracts, or simply not having the traffic they've had over the last 20-ish months. How are you calming them down, uplifting them, providing guidance, guidance suggestions while staying away from being preachy or turning the conversation into a pep rally? All right, Deborah, what do you say to that? Um, I'm reading it again. Will you put it back up? I was reading. You read yes. really fast, Todd. All right, I will try to slow down. It's you know, on phonics didn't work for me. Remember? Okay. <sighs> you know, Six I'm. Uh, Everyone's making fun of me. I listened to that Tony Robbins book on life force and it's like this yeah. thick. And so I listened to the first two chapters, Tony reads, I listened to it on two and a half speed and I'm listening to his narrator on three times the speed and I'm cranking through it. I love that book, by the way, if any of you are into your health or are thinking about maybe wouldn't it be nice if I live a little bit longer, you know, it's, it's got all the crazy cutting edge things that are going on in the world. And I think you all have uh, known that, you know, I'm kind of a health nerd. Um, we've interviewed Kevin Kaufman, who's a realtor buddy of mine, who's also a health nerd. And uh, Dave and I have interviewed him and we've done specific call just on health. And every time we have Kevin on, there's some health related thing that comes up. But it really is a an eye opener because I listen to a lot of about probably half of the podcasts I listen to are on health and longevity. And, and this is a lot of those minds all in one space, but it's just stuff I'd never heard of that just blow me away. So a side note while Deborah reads this article that I'm showing all of you. I was going to say, I, I couldn't help but notice the, uh, the the vein in your bicep today, I think, because your sleeve's up a little bit. I want to be like, are you, you know, working out? I did do my push-ups this morning, you know, <laughs> did my push-ups this morning. I'm going to be living near Venice Beach. So anyone who's in California, June and July, I'll be living near Venice Beach, right near Muscle Beach. So my joke is I'm going to go to Muscle Beach and work out with Arnold Schwarzenegger, but yeah, probably not. Well, it, it's good. I know you're, you are very healthy. You do. That's been, you know, on your list of things that you share, and I, I'm working at getting better and better at that. Um, but okay, so I was reading that comment, and it said one. I was kind of surprised by the not having the traffic, and I wondered, did that mean not having as much traffic to like open houses and listings, or did that mean with buyers? Do you know or have clarity on that, Todd? I'm assuming it's probably both, right? Okay. So I, you know, that's sort of my assumption, and I, and I, you know, my. My sort of when I back up and say, okay, from ten thousand feet, what's the you know what's what's going on? It's it's the affordability issue, right? We talked about it a month ago that you know Jeremy said I'm requalifying all of my buyers because that's you know that's really it. I mean, someone who qualified for four hundred thousand before might only qualify for three twenty five now, so we we definitely have that panic, I think. And so my gut tells me that there's less buyers because people are hearing that rates went up and they're they don't want to apply, and you also have probably less, as a result, less buyers out there. I know looking at my team, you know, my team's applications for March are significantly down from February. However, January and February were record months for applications. So it's kind of interesting, you know, it's kind of an average month, but, you know, part of that, there's no refis in there, but, you know, purchase has been pretty, you know, has been pretty strong. And then I think you also have, you know, the underlying piece that I would be bringing up in this situation is, well, hey, how's being a renter working out for you? because we know that rents are shooting up. I mean, it's, you know, I, I own rental property and, you know, I feel kind of bad. I mean, I literally just saw, I mean, one of my rentals in, you know, I've got, I'd call it uh, affordable, more affordable, not quite affordable housing in, in, you know, the Phoenix area. And, you know, one of my houses that I would call probably my least expensive neighborhood is, you know, rented for $1,400. The tenants just moved out and the, they relisted it for $1,900, the property manager, right? I have another house that we rented for $1,550 for the previous three years. It's released now for $2,400. Um, and so th I think that's that's the conversation I would, where I'd probably start it with someone who's a renter is awesome. Well, how, let's talk about how being a renter is working out for you because I don't think it's, you know, at least in the Phoenix market where we have hedge funds as one of our biggest buyers still buying property to hold, not to turn around and sell. Um, I think that that's, that that's probably a big part of my conversation with a buyer. What do you think, Deborah? Well, I immediately when I was reading the caption, I thought you, you have to have a little bit of context. And I would want to know what are 
what are the common patterns or if you're talking to your borrowers or for this example it was you know an agent calling panicked one i think that's it's natural to panic at first and they probably have a relationship where that agent felt comfortable enough to make that call but i would want to get to the to the root of what why are the buyers backing out like what is there any kind of pattern is it was it something specific with the home because sometimes we create stories in our head and we think you know business is down but we're, we're not actually looking at the truth and the numbers and and maybe you know march you gotta remember there's spring break in there maybe there were people who were on vacations and they weren't you know wanting to even think about buying a home and they're they're getting things reset for when they get back from being on vacation um, so I just, I would be curious of why are they on the fence? Is it really having to do with rate? Is it more about the home? Is it the maybe misconception of thinking maybe more homes will start to go live and be listed come April after, you know, the spring break ends and we get through March? You just, you have to really get to the root of it. I, I would, I used to tell my clients, sometimes we focus on the smoke and we get distracted by the smoke and we don't go to the fire. We have to go to the source of the fire. And if you don't ask the questions, I think it was this one that Dave responded saying, you know, he loves the acronym love when you're listening, where you make sure you listen, you observe, you validate what that person is saying, whatever concerns that they have, whether that's the agent or the client. And then you expand off that so that maybe it's just a difference in perception. So they may think maybe I shouldn't consider buying or maybe getting off the fence because when they pre-qualified interest rates were maybe in the lower fours, upper threes, and now they're in the five. So they kind of go in this panic mode of, you know, should I wait? And so to me, that's just every challenge is just an opportunity to teach or to learn something to then go teach. And so when you don't look at it as a, you know, again, if you want to have your, your freak out moment, that's, that's natural. And Tony Robbins will say, just make sure those moments are, are moments in time. You don't make that your then story that you believe in and you anchor on, which then prevents you from doing those daily activities that you need to be doing, which hopefully you have one to many or social media in there, whether it's to your database or to your spheres of educating them of what's actually real and what's just the smoke that we're being distracted about. All right. I love that. I wrote that down. Every challenge is an opportunity to learn something to go teach. Like how, how big is that for our community? And I do like the way that you're approaching it. Hey, what's the context to it? And so I think that's, again, always comes back to ask better questions of your clients, ask better questions of your realtor partners to go deep and figure out what it is, right? If they're worried the market's going to crash, then you go back to the video where we interviewed David Childers and he shared, you know, all the statistics on why you know that's not going to happen and then make sure you follow keeping current matters so that you can get up-to-date information on that you know if they're um you know if they're qualify now but are still panicked right do it cost of waiting tca to show them well hey here's what it's gonna be costing you if you're gonna wait longer if they're a renter right do a rent versus own all the things that you know are in the tool belt that you have as a mortgage coach that your competition you know doesn't have i just think it's really rare that you know we see somebody who is that you're competing with that actually uses any of the tools, you know, that you use like rate watch that follows Dan Rawitz that has mortgage coach, you know, that's using um, the things that make you who are part of this community stand out where other people don't. So I think that was a great um, lesson, Deborah, in helping people understand how to, how to approach it differently. Cause here I am ready to attack and you're like, well, wait, I'm in the stack. I want to think about this and ask better questions. Um, and so that's the yin and the yang, right? That is where most people go off and you sell someone the wrong direction because you didn't ask the questions versus pause, slow down, don't listen on speed three, and then ask the question so that when you're going to sell, you're selling the correct direction versus, you know, not. Well, I also thought like what an honor and privilege for that loan officer to have the agent's feel comfortable enough to share that with them, but also an, an opportunity to sit down. Like, sounds like you're experiencing some pains in your business right now with prospects. I'd love for us to sit down and meet. Let's go through it together and really identify what the root causes are. Maybe some things that we could do differently as a team together. Maybe I could help utilize some of my tools like Mortgage Coach and help provide a sense of urgency just by displaying the numbers and showing people the cost of waiting even just three months of what it costs that that buyer who wasn't being competitive on their offers or backed out of that home three months ago, let's look at what it cost them by just now 
waiting three months, just in rate alone. Um, but what an opportunity to bring them in and make them feel heard and uniquely seen and validated. And again, the, the problem may not really be a problem, but it, it's true to them. So you've got to then break down, you know, what other perspectives are, are they maybe missing? And the hard part is it could be, they could be the problem. <laughs> they could, uh, you know, self-discover that through your mastermind together where you wrap your arms around them, you know, have them come in, let them share everything that they think is true to them, and then just break it down and create an action plan. But at least allow them to feel heard and validated and seen and, um, and then inspired and have hope because you're the solutionist. You're the lender that cares enough to help them solve the problem that they just now revealed to you. And so many won't. So many like don't ask for help or they hold it in or they don't trust you enough. So I thought that was a massive compliment to the loan officer. Well, I just feel like, you know, I, I think I've been lucky that I have a, I feel like I've got a natural ability to um, listen and connect, but I don't do it as a, at a high enough level. I never took any sales courses, so I'm not trained in that. And I'm training someone now who was a manager at Hertz and he actually took sales courses when he got hired on there. And I thought, ah, you know, what an aha. Like I said, well, what is it that you learn there that, you know, you might, you might apply? And it's funny. It's always the, hey, listen and ask better questions was what I took away from it. He said a whole lot more than that. And so what a great, what a great way to wrap, what, what a great way to wrap this up. So, um, you know, Deborah and I always love the opportunity for us together. We're always, we love it and we're always fearful of it, of just us together getting to talk the whole time. I tell you, it's really easy to have a call when you have a great guest and you ask them a question and they talk for five to 10 minutes and then you just say, oh, that's great. And you point out a couple of things. Um, it's definitely uh, a little more when we bite it off together that we're going to do this and we're going to try to drive a point that we think is important to the community home. And uh, really grateful, Deborah, that that you jumped in and as always and did that with me. What do you want to leave the group with before we let everyone go? Uh, basically, what my shirt says, which is social good. So take the uh, article that you that we just shared in today's call and use it for social good. Find an opportunity to learn something from it, and then go serve those who need it. So be be world class. Awesome. Love, love that. So as always, you know, if you spent time here watching this live or watching this on YouTube, um, kudos to you, but you invested time. So we got to take action, right? And this is your opportunity. Um, do what Deborah just said. Um, think about the ideas that we threw out there and think what resonated with you the most, what you think will resonate with your clients, with your referral partners the most, and make it happen. Schedule a little bit of on time right now or a jam session, as Dave would call it, and get it done now so that you don't go into the weekend wishing or hoping that you would have gotten it done. And uh, that's where I'm going to call it a wrap. On behalf of Dave and the whole crew over at Mortgage Coach, uh, Deborah with Plug and Play SM, myself and my team over at Win by Noon, thank you for being here. We look forward to seeing you next week on Tuesday's call. Have a good one. Bye.